guys, Jacob and Annie here again this week with our Forever House build. Um, things are moving along, not always smoothly and not always, always fast, but they are moving in a positive direction. Last week, the big goal was to get all of the walls up. We got the basement walls framed and we were like, sweet, we got it done early. We're going to take the week off and maybe go do something fun. Um, but then <laughs> Saturday, get a phone call. Got a truck hey, of materials showing up on Sunday. Yeah. Well, there goes the weekend. Might as well unload the truck. Yeah. Uh, material handling on the job is a, a big deal because there's so many things that go into this house and they all arrive at pretty much the same time or a week later. And so you, you better be burnt through the materials that showed up the first week. So now it's time for us to put the TJIs on and uh, build a floor. So, you know, that involves putting the TJIs on, doing some blocking, getting everything in the floor that needs to be, and then we got to sheet it and pretty much we'll have a finished floor, I'm hoping, by the end of the week. Before we do that, we have a few support items that we have to take care of. The first one is we have this massive steel I-beam that we have to put in there. It spans the width of the garage, and um, Jacob's already put in a pocket in the concrete walls, and we put a pocket in the basement framed walls. Uh, but the big challenge is that we've kind of framed ourselves in, so we're trying to figure out how to get this huge steel beam into the garage and set it in place. There was an engineering point where it said, you know, we have these big point loads that land right in the middle of the garage and to, to accompany those big point loads that come down, we had to put a steel beam in and span the distance and basically transfer that weight down. Getting that uh, steel beam in place was was definitely a challenge. You know, it's not that big of a, a deal actually putting it in. It's just uh, when we did put it in, we were like, we didn't have a, a boom truck or a crane on site. So, you know, using the skid steer was an idea I had. I was like, well, I might as well put it on the outside wall downstairs and then go inside back in and back my way over and set it down and then turn around. So I only had so much room to work, but being able to make that happen was, uh, it was a lot more smooth uh, putting the beam in than I thought it was going to be. Once we got the big steel beam in place, uh, my brother has been helping us and he's a really good contractor, so we just sent him up top to start setting floor joists and get that floor on. So we stayed downstairs to figure out the wood beams that will support the great room upstairs. So we had the TJIs on both sides and we were working to the middle of the building and trying to get the uh, beams put in down below. and. To put them in, we had the all thread, and you have to um, somehow epoxy them or whatever into the concrete. So they make a, it's a two-part concrete mix in a little tube, and you basically fill that up, and you can get stuff that sets in two hours, or you can set, make stuff that sets in 14 minutes. You want to be pretty quick if you're using the, uh, the, the quick setting stuff. But. We're in a timber frame home, which basically means the structure of the home is big timbers. And it starts in the basement, and um, the timbers that we have have um, holes pre-drilled. So you just set that right on top of the all thread, on top of basically a big square washer that elevates the beam so that you know there's moisture or anything under the beam. It doesn't rot the end of the beam. Building layout and everything was done, but we actually had to lay out the beams where they had to go with the footings that we put in. Those were all point loads. So we got it all laid out on the floor, put those uh, all thread in, and you know you had to. We had to make sure that everything was right from the ground up, going upstairs into the third floor, everything had to match. And not only did it have to match, but the sits panels had to go on the outside of the building. You know, so if you're off three quarters of an inch, well, you're off three quarters of an inch and your sits panels don't fit. So we had to be right on the layout down below. It was pretty brutal drilling the all thread in. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, like you hit a piece of rebar and you're there for an hour and it's... <laughs> Um, once we got all of the wood beams set in the basement level, we could finish up all of the floor joists. And that went pretty fast to just do our layout, put those up there, and block in between, and we're ready to start sheeting this baby. So setting uh, TJIs is actually a pretty easy task. It's uh, It probably takes you longer to actually do your layout on your wall. So we're getting a little bit smarter. We forked the plywood sheets up, and then one person was the glue person, one person was the nail gun person, and. Him and my brother were just walking around on top of the floor joists with a piece of three quarter inch plywood on their head. And I'm like, oh, these are crazy. 
You want to make sure like you've chopped lines and you're holding for those lines so that you're square. You don't want to start getting off. You might have noticed in last week's video when we framed up the basement walls that we didn't complete the sheeting on the basement walls. And the reason that we didn't do that is the floor sits on top of the basement walls and we wanted the plywood sheeting to tie in that joint between the, the basement walls and the main level floor. So we went ahead and sheeted the basement walls all the way up to the top of the floor and just finished that out. And it's kind of cool. We're like at a really nice stage where the floor is done, the basement walls are done, and we're essentially ready to put this timber frame up next week and it's going to start looking like our dream home. And once we stood on that up, upper floor and the view is just amazing up here and I mean this is why you live in Alaska so that you can enjoy these types of views. It's going to be pretty interesting watching all the timbers get set next week so stay tuned. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.